Hi, I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop. And today we're going to try to put this spindle back together with the new bearings and get it back in that mower deck. So, when I took it apart, I found out I had a bad spindle. The threads on the spindle are all messed up somehow, probably from somebody else taking it apart. And so is the nut. Looks like maybe they cross-threaded it and forced it on there. That's why I had so much trouble getting it apart in the last video. So let's try to get this thing put back together, shall we? First thing we're going to do, apparently get all dirty, because I didn't clean these parts off. We'll put these snap rings in that holds in the top bearing. Now, I've had a lot of comments from viewers on how to buy bearings. <laughs> I've been buying bearings for years. What you want to do when you take a bearing out, I buy Timpkin bearings. There is a number on the bearing. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on this camera or not. Yep, you can. There's the number. Now, if you're going to order these like on Amazon or eBay, you don't know what you're really going to get. The first set I ordered for the first snapper I rebuilt, I took the exact numbers off the bearing, called up my bearing company and said, this is what I need. They shipped them to the shop. And when I got them, one side was shielded and one side was open. Now this is not the bearing that goes in a snapper, obviously, but it's the only bearing I had laying around that did not have a shield or a seal on it. And I just wanted to show you what that looks like. This is a unshielded bearing. Some of your snapper spindles have them bearings in it. That's why they put these grease fittings on, which if your machine does have an open bearing, in your spindle they'll normally have one on the bottom one on the top and the open side is in so the closed side is out to keep the dirt out of them <clears throat> and then you periodically grease them which is the worst thing you can do uh, the grease when it's inside this tube over the years is going to turn hard. Grease is made out of lithium. It's, it's a soap-based grease, and it gets hard. It dries out. Now, you pump grease in here. This is full of old grease. Your new grease is not necessarily going to get into your bearings. The old grease is. That's going to destroy them. You buy bearings today. They are sealed on both sides or you should get them. You can even get them sealed on both sides. This bearing is shielded, and if you look real close, up by this little crack right here, you're gonna see black. That's the seal. Nothing is gonna get in or out of this bearing, even if you force grease in here, because at the top, they have a little vent hole. Your grease is going to come out of that vent hole underneath your brake drum. And it's just going to make a mess. It is not going to help your bearing. Bearings today are permanently lubricated for the life of the bearing. Put them in and forget about them. You never have to deal with it. Enough on that. I've had other videos I've said the same thing and a lot of people will get a hold of me and ask me when do we grease these? You never grease them. Don't worry about it. I gotta get that snap ring down where I want it. And it doesn't want to go. The first one is the hardest one to get in because it's so far down in there. really got it crooked. 
just want to tap it up so it snaps into that groove. And that looks like it's in there. For the most part. This is going to be stubborn. This is really being stubborn. There. It's in there now, by golly. Now we're going to put this bearing in here. Hopefully, that won't give me as much trouble. This is a very tight fit, so you want to get them started straight. Now, if you have to tap on them, you want to tap on the outer edge. Don't hit the center, you're going to ruin the bearing. Then you want to push as straight down as you can to get that to snap in. And this one is really tight. I guess I'm going to go press it in on the drill press. I'll be right back. Well, that was a tough one. It was pretty tight fit, which is what you want. You don't want that bearing slipping in there. Now we'll try to get this snap ring in. That one went in much better. Just want to make sure it is truly seated in that groove. You don't want that coming out. Now I did get a new spindle. We'll slide that up in here. The double threaded end goes on the bottom. And now we want to build this up so this pulley doesn't rub. I think I'm going to have to grab a couple of small washers. I'll be right back. Okay, I found some washers for this. Now, normally they'll have a big, thick washer on the top, and they'll have a thick washer on the bottom with that boss sticking out. That goes on the bottom of the spindle. On the top, if we just put this washer on, it's going to rub on that snap ring, and it's going to make up. It's going to bind the spindle right up. So what you want to do first use a couple of these smaller washers. Here's two of them. I'm going to drop them on. They are the same outside diameter as the inner race is, so it doesn't hurt or it doesn't touch the snap ring. Put the big one on and check to make sure you're not rubbing on the snap ring. This is pretty close. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a third one in. Now you don't want to put a bunch of them in there because you do want to keep this relatively close to the top of the spindle to keep the dirt out. And that just really looks too much to me. That's not touching. I'm going to go with that. Then we're going to put the big pulley on the top and the nut. I couldn't use the original nut. That one's ruined. They cross-threaded it. So I had another spindle here I could tear apart and get parts off. Wow, don't that go on nice? And I think I'm going to put these... two washers on there just to help that nut tighten up. We're going to have to take it off anyway, but that's just to hold the thing together while I put the bottom on. Okay, the next bearing. Let's hope this one goes in a little better. We're going to have to press that down in here. And it looks 
looks like we're going to have to go over and press that one in. I'll be right back. Okay, we got that one pressed in. Now, in case you're wondering what I use to press them bearings in with, you don't want to press on the inner race. You only want to push on the outer race because you're pushing it into a tight fitting tube that's tight on the outer race. If you were pressing it onto a shaft without this tube in the way, then you'd want to push on the inner race to shove it down on the shaft. But these shafts, they're floating is what they call them. They, they're not a press fit because the bearings are pinched between this shoulder and this shoulder inside of the housing with the uh, mounting bar for the blade and the top nut. That's what aligns the bearing. Remember I told you it was floating? Let me grab this old bearing and we'll put the bottom one on. The top one is held in place with the two snap rings. That one cannot move. The bottom one, when you go to put the bottom one in, you press it in until it hits that shoulder. That's where it goes. It lines itself up. You don't have to worry about it. Now to get this in here, sometimes you need some washers in here. These are little spacer washers they give you. They're a large diameter hole and the outside diameter of these washers are as the same as the diameter of this inner race so they don't rub on the seal or on the outer race of the bearing. Now all you want to do is build this up enough. Some machines don't have this washer with the flange. Then you have to build it up with these smaller washers. If you put this one on alone and you can see it sticks up above the rim on the spindle housing. So you know when you put this on it's not going to rub and bind up the machine. Now that's kind of close. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one of these washers in there and that lifts that up quite a bit. But still you don't have a big crack for dirt to get into. You want to stay away from that. Now, we'll put this nut on here so we don't lose everything. And we'll take the top off. We can get it broke loose. I probably tightened it up too tight. And I did. Oh, I was going to tell you. Got ahead of myself there. To press this bearing in, you want to push on the outer race. A lot of times you can find a socket that fits perfect. This happens to be an inch and a quarter impact. Now a standard inch and a quarter is probably going to be a different size, so it might not hit on that outer race. That works perfect for pressing the bearings in. You just want to make sure it hits on the outer race. If it's too small and you press it in there, and hit on the seal or the shield, you're going to ruin the bearing. So make sure you grab the right socket that just fits in that housing and pushes on that outer race of the bearing. I'll put this one on. I may have to get my impact over here to bust that nut loose. Let me check. Okay, we busted that loose. Take this off. Maybe we'll put this nut back on so we don't lose our washers we already have stacked in there properly. And I guess I'll clean some of this mess out of the way so I can get the deck up here. And we'll slide that back in place because this baby's done. I'll be right back.
Okay, I just love lifting up these mower decks. Now, we're going to put the spindle in. I'm going to slip that up in from the bottom. <laughs> if I can get my hand under here. Now to bolt these in, this particular one has self-locking nut and a bolt. They're what they call a flanged bolt and a flanged nut. The nuts look like they have a built-in washer and the teeth are what locks it. The same with a bolt. It looks like it has a built-in washer and it has teeth on it that lock it in. Now typically the company puts the bolts through from the top and the nuts on in the bottom. That way your threads can get all rusty and you can't get the nuts off. I put them in the bolts up from the bottom and the nuts on the top. It's not going to matter. There's nothing down in there that you're going to affect as far as clearance. It's just personal preference. Myself, I like to keep the threads as clean as possible so I can get the thing apart next time. Now, we'll lift this up. And that's the way we want to drop them in here. try to get a nut started. First one's always the fun one. Trying to get your hand in there is always fun too. Especially my big hands. Trying to do this at home and you got a two-year-old, hey, the hands fit right in. I'm gonna get one of my stands. I'm getting tired of holding that thing up on my arm. Now we'll drop the next bolt in. Now there are six holes in the spindle and in the mower deck. You only need to use three of them. You have three bolts. Put them in every other hole. That's what the factory does. Now if you want to, you can put six bolts in there. Not going to matter. You need a 9 16 wrench. And a socket on the bottom. I like to snug up all three of them and then go back and tighten them. Okay, let's try this again. Was anybody paying attention a little more than I was and noticed what I did wrong? I guess I was talking and not watching. I stuck the bolts in from the top instead of pushing them up in from the bottom. So now I have the nuts are on the top. And the exposed thread is on the top, where hopefully they'll stay a lot cleaner and not get as rusty. Tighten them up good. Now we can set this back down.
And hopefully we'll have a little better luck getting this snap ring on than we had getting it off. Nope, probably not. Get that thing in there. Okay, we're going to hit pause. There, we got that one on. <laughs> Now we can get this bracket out of here for our and now we can fight with this next one to try to get it in place. This one seems to be cooperating a little bit better. Get it close and you can shove it on with a screwdriver. Now we'll hook this spring back up. Now we want to... Where's my parts? Ah. brake drum on. Make sure when you push down on that and turn it, nothing's binding up. That should all fit just fine. Now we can fight with this and try to figure out how that was on there goes this way around, pull that cotter key back out, we put back in, and the small washer, put that on the top, stick the cotter key back in for a minute. Now if we pull this up as if you're going to engage your deck, hopefully that'll stay there. It's not gonna. So you go over and get one of your good woodworking clamps and hope you don't get it all greasy. We'll put a clamp on that pedal and hold it in place. We'll pull this cotter key out. that pin down out of the way. Guess I need two hands here. Well, why don't we just pull that off and make a little more room here. My pin's stuck. Works a lot better without that brake drum in your way. Put that key back in there and we'll bend them before we forget. And we can put, put the brake drum in. Release the brake. Voila. Now put the big pulley on the top. The two washers. Put that one on top, seeing that's got the red paint on it. And put the nut on. I 
don't know if I can tighten this up by holding this or if I got to put the bar on the bottom. Nope, that did it. Now the only thing left to do is to put the mounting bar on the bottom. And the big nut. We take this nut off. Push them back on there. Make sure that's not rubbing. Screw your mounting bar on. I'm not going to tighten that up tight because I'm replacing this. It's bent. My new one just hasn't come in yet. Then put your self-locking nut on. It will start a couple of turns. And then you got to put it to rest way on with a socket or an impact. But that's it. Back together. As you can see, the brake's working. Now it's free. I don't hear anything rubbing. The brake works. We're golden. That's it. It's back together. It's on the floor. The next thing I have to do on the father-in-law's machine is I got to put boots on it. The boot, when I was uh, putting the shims in and stretching the boot back out of the way, it ripped on me. Uh, apparently, it was an old boot or it wouldn't have done that. So I'm glad it ripped now and not after he'd been using it for a while. So I got to get some boots ordered. I think I'll order like three pairs. So I got some extras. And I think I'll order a couple dozen of them shim washers because I'm getting a little low on those. That's it for today. If you have any questions or comments, put them in the description box below or send me an email. I try to answer all of them, but I'm up to, I don't know, 100, 120 a day. So it might take me a little while to get to you, but I will answer your emails. So until next time, work safe, have fun, and put some new bearings in that deck. And we'll talk to you soon.